Steve Dotto here. You know, sometimes I wonder how we ever got along without Dropbox. I mean, I know we did get along without Dropbox. I know I did manage to share large files and do projects. But good heavens, it must have been difficult. I think I've just kind of blocked it out of my mind. Now, I want to show you today three essential ways of sharing files in Dropbox because I think people get a little bit confused with some of the, the, some of the different ways that you can use Dropbox to, to share files. For those of you who haven't uh, yet engaged with Dropbox, we have a video that gives you an overview of how Dropbox, work, Dropbox works. But essentially, it is a cloud-based storage system, which you start with a small amount of free storage, which is actually quite a large amount of free storage. You can add to that storage by getting your friends to sign up, or you can just pay a small monthly fee and then you can get a lot of storage. What can you do with that storage? Well, you can back up your files, you can store documents and make sure that you can access them on all of your different devices. That's the key to Dropbox, is the fact that we can access it from anywhere. So any of the documents and files that we put on Dropbox, we can access from our computer, from our notebook, from our, desk, uh, our work computer. We can do all of that through the web, through the web interface, but we can also access those files with our mobility devices, with our Android or iPhones or our tablets. We can also share files back and forth. So I'm going to show you how the sharing works because I think that's one of the really most important and compelling aspects within Dropbox. So I've got Dropbox open here in the web browser. So this is how you'll access it over the internet. And it, we also have it installed as an application on our desktop computer. And that's what this little icon right here is. This is my Dropbox folder. Now, I should tell you, all of my Dropbox files are stored locally on a hard drive. And they're, so there's kind of one base area where all of your files are. And then it, that folder where you have all of your Dropbox at, uh, files is then uploaded to the internet. So I, if I open my Dropbox folder, I'm actually now in my own finder or in my own file manager on my computer, browsing through my own documents. And here are where all of my Dropbox files live. Now, as well as accessing all of my files myself in Dropbox, I can use the fact that my, all of my files are stored in the cloud and I can share those files with others. And this overcomes one of the huge limitations of attachments in email, which is large file size. So it allows me to basically upload any of my documents and then share them with others. Now, there's three different ways of sharing files within Dropbox. And if I go here in my public folder, the public folder is where you're going to <clears throat> put most of the files that you want to share an awful lot or any stock documents that you might want to be able to give people access to on an ongoing basis, maybe a price list, that sort of stuff. In your public folder, if you right click on any of the different uh, documents within it, and let's say that uh, I've got this little poster that we've got for an upcoming theater event, there you find a little Dropbox menu that goes copy public link. This allows us to then take this Dropbox message, I copy the public link, and that's now in my clipboard. So if I create a new email, let me just create a quick little email for you. I'll just go new email here, and there it is. If I now paste within that email, that is the link to that document. So anybody who I send this email to, they simply click on this link, and that document will download to their computer. It's almost identical to doing attachments, uh, except the document is loaded, is stored on the cloud as opposed to on my computer. And we don't use up all of that extra little bit of ba bandwidth sending a whole attachment through. So when, if it's a large file, if it's a graphic, for instance, when you send it to somebody this way, they don't have to wait for their email to download it. They can choose the time and the place that they want to actually download that file and then download it. And it also overcomes size limitations. Quite often your email software will only send certain sized attachments. It overcomes that. Now, that is the way that we share files within our public folder. And uh, But often we don't want to move files back and forth. They're in project folders. For example, I've got my presentations here. And I give a lot of talks all around. And so I've given a talk to the Vancouver Real Estate Association. I want to share my keynote presentation or a PDF document with them. So how do I do that? Well, I can also do the exact same thing. I could go to Dropbox and I can share the link with them here. And this will create a link that they can then download into their computer. But in this case here, I actually want to share both documents with them. I want to share a folder. So this is where sharing a link becomes that much more valuable because if I share this link here, you see at the folder level rather than at the document level, I can share the whole folder with, uh, with, the, with the people I want to send it to. So they can then download the, uh, so they can then download that document themselves. 
Now, in this case, instead of just copying that link to my clipboard, it actually opened up the web browser and allows me to send email directly from my web application here to share this link with others. And I can also copy this link to this page so that I can put it into my own email and use my own email client if I choose. Now, if you were really paying attention, you noticed something pretty interesting when I went share this link. If, let's go back to this, the, the, the exact same place share the link there's also share this folder and you're thinking i know you're thinking what's the difference between sharing the link steve and sharing the folder excellent question sharing the link means that they can download the files that are in the link it's perfect if you give a talk you want people to be able to download the presentations and that's basically it anything you want to share one way sharing the folder means that you can have two-way communication so that that folder now becomes part of their Dropbox mix as well and they can upload files to the folder they can make changes to the folder and I'll give you an example of where that works really well I do a weekly radio show and here is where I keep all of my radio files with this I uh, quite often record those uh, interviews here in my home office and then I upload the audio from those interviews into this folder my producer then takes those files, edits them, and packages them into the show. And then when my show is complete, you can see right here, he, he then re-uploads completed shows so that I have access to the final file as well. So when you're in a collaborative world, that's when you want to share a folder. Now, so the, you've basically got the three ways. You've got the just sharing a simple link of a simple graphic or of a simple document that you just want to share. Then you've got the sharing the link where you share a whole folder and allow people to download all of the contents to a folder. And then you have the actual sharing of a folder where people can then make changes to the folder. Now, this doesn't just work, as I mentioned, this isn't just on your desktop. No, it also works on your mobility devices. And so I've got my iPad here. Let me pop open my Dropbox application here within the iPad. And if I go there and I go, let's go back to my Dropbox folder. There it is. There's my Dropbox folder. And as you can see, it's the exact same as it is on my desktop. And if I want now to be able to share or be able to access any of the files here, I can do it through this app. Now, for the iPad users, especially Dropbox is very important because in the early days, you know, still, it's very difficult to load files and documents onto the iPad. They've kind of closed down the system quite a bit. So Dropbox was a way for us to get documents into the iPad that we could work with ourselves. But the other thing about the iPad is it's different because it's difficult to download documents to, it's also difficult to add attachments if you want to have documents that you want to send back and forth by email. And that's one of the real limitations of iOS in the iPad. Dropbox provides us with a great workaround if you stop and think about it for a second. If you have those common files like price lists and things like that, you put them in your shared Dropbox folder. Then when you want to actually share them with somebody, when you want to send them as an attachment, here's what you do. I'm going to go to my public folder and I'm going to imagine that the, uh, this, this, uh, there we go. This is the document that I want to share. So I want to send this as an attachment. Now what I do is I just go into the, into the, the management tool here, the, uh, the sharing tool, and I can choose to add this to an email, a text message, a Facebook message, post it to Facebook, tweet it, or copy it to my clipboard. So this here will actually launch my email software and it will put the link in so that people can download it. It's the exact same as if I did it with it by copying the link on my, on my uh, computer and, and uh, embedding it in the email. But now it's done on my iPad, which is often a closed system. And, and you did, did you notice all those other options? I can take that same link and I could tweet it. I could post it on Twitter so people could download the document from Twitter or from Facebook. It, it gives us within the Dropbox app lots of different flex flexibility as far as sharing documents. As I said before, I can't remember what it was like before Dropbox as far as sharing files. It must have been dark and, 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 and dreadfully dreary days for all of us who like to share files on the internet. I hope that you found this video useful. We have lots of other videos at our site. Please give us a like, give us some kudos if you think it's valuable. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.